Well, we are in the 15th chapter of Genesis. So far, we're kind of going chapter at a time because it seems to fit pretty good right now uh, in the 30 minute time that we have to study. So in the 15th chapter, uh, if you remember, Abraham has just gotten through with the war. Uh, they've been fighting uh, and have won the battle. And, and uh, uh, as we studied last Wednesday night, and so when the ver first verse says, after these things, that's what it's after. It's after God has given him the victory in this battle. He's come back home. He's restored Lot to all that he had been taken away and, st and, and, and stolen from him. So he did all that. And then the Bible says in verse 1 of chapter 15, after these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. You know, I, I, that verse right there is enough to go home on tonight. Amen. Because what he is to Abraham, you need to know he is to us. And no matter what, you might think, wow, Abraham just saw God deliver these kings into his hands and he had this great victory. And why would God need to come to him and tell him this? Well, I'm gonna tell you the thing about a miracle and a great victory. Right after great things happen, quite often, that's the time when you will have something hit you in the face Amen. that will try to uh, bring you down. The devil doesn't want you up. He wants you down. And if he can keep on pulling on you long enough, he can destroy your faith and pull you away from what you know God already did. I mean, how many of you have ever seen somebody that God did a big miracle and then they turn their back on God later on? Have you ever seen that happen? Amen. Well, you know why? Because we have an enemy and that enemy is gonna do everything to attack you to get you away from understanding the victory, how quickly we forget. You know, it's been made known to us about the 9-11 attack. How many of you think about it very often? You know when we think about it? 9-11. <laughs> it's about the only time we think about it. Those three, over 3,000 3, people or so, that their lives were taken. And, and we don't remember things. Things don't stay fresh to us. We are just human people that just kind of wander away from... The, that's why, you know, years ago I'd go to church on Sunday and Sunday night and man, the power of God come down, you'd feel so good, but then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday is like, pfft, you know, nothing. You didn't feel good. You don't feel saved. You don't, you know, all that. And then Wednesday night you come back and get a little shot and then you go Thursday, Friday and Saturday and bleh, everything, you know, come on. You know, that's the way I used to live my life before I understood the great grace of God. Amen. And, and so... Uh, thank God for his mercy. Yes. I thank God for his mercy for all those years that I didn't understand his provision that he still kept on. He didn't give up on me. Amen. And he will not give up on you. Thank God. You know, it, just as, just as uh, Adina said, many people gave up on Tina. Trust me, I know. And I know how she was and I know where she was. And many people give up, but I'm going to tell you something, God doesn't give up. So we should never give up. People are more valuable than anything in the world. The most valuable thing in the world is people, not junk. And we should never give up interceding, reaching out to the Lord, and lifting up people in our prayers. Because prayers do make a difference. Pray. You know, the Bible says you have not. Why? Because you ask not. You know, we're so... Uh, we, don't, we don't always realize. You know, we should pray about everything. That's what it says in Philippians. Pray about everything and don't worry about anything. And, and if you don't pray about it, you're going to be worrying about it because you don't have that confidence that you've given it to the Lord. But uh, tonight I saw a great peace. You know, Clint has great peace. He knows God's kept him alive. He knows he'd be dead today if God hadn't kept him alive. And so he's got that confidence and that peace uh, in the process. So it's wonderful to see that. But God appeared to Abram after that great victory. He, he showed up. He appeared to him to reaffirm to him this wonderful thing, which says, don't, you don't have to fear. That's what our youth group just did this uh, Sunday or so ago. Fear not. There's nothing to fear. The scripture's telling us here. God says this a lot, doesn't he? Angels said it. God said it over and over again. Fear not. 
Abram. So don't let fear come upon you. I am thy shield. You know what a shield is? You know, y'all, y'all know what a shield is used for? It's, it was held in the hand to shield the body from the arrows and the whatever kind of weapons they would be throwing rocks even back then they threw. That shield was held up in front of the warrior to ward off anything coming at you that could hurt you or destroy you. God said, I am your shield. Isn't that wonderful? Hallelujah. We have a great shield, a mighty shield, and thy exceeding great reward. You know, well, I've said this before, I'll say it again. If you got Jesus, you got enough. You got enough in your life. There's no way you can be defeated. Oh, we go through things where we lose, but we're not defeated. We're not defeated because we have an exceeding great reward. Now, after the Lord says this to Abram, look at what he says. And Abram said, Lord God, wilt thou give me some, what wilt thou give me? Seeing I go childless, and the steward of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is mine heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came into him, saying, well, I'm going to stop and go back to those two verses before I go to this one. You know something? Sometimes we complain to the Lord. Now, technically, if you want to get real spiritual on me, I'll tell you, you could say, well, you shouldn't ever complain to the Lord. I agree with that. But has anybody ever done it? I'll put my hand up so you all feel comfortable. <laughs> Abram is complaining. He says, you know, God just showed up to him and says to him, Abram, I'm your shield and you're exceeding great reward. Well, you know what? Abram didn't say, thank you, God. <laughs> he, you know why? Because he's consumed. Abram is consumed with his, pers his right now circumstances. He's consumed with where he is right now. Come on. Because if we look at our present moment, we can often be discouraged. If your eye is on what's going on right this minute and you don't have a long-range view of the things of God, you're going to go around with discouragement. You're going, to be, you're going to be dealing with all those attacks coming. You're going to be dealing with your failures, dealing with your losses. That's where your mind is going to be all the time, is on those things. I can't do this. I can't do that. I couldn't do this. I, I've done this. This has failed. This didn't work. All of these things, relationships that can't be healed, all kinds of things going on in your life can consume you so much that you cannot even see the blessings of God. Yes, amen. You know, even though the sky is dark, let me tell you something, the sun is still shining. Amen. Did you know that? When that sky is covered with the blackest clouds in the, that you can't even see your hand hardly in front of your face, the sun yes, he is. is still shining yes, he is. right now. There's a, that's right. The, the S-U-N is, is uh, shining even if it's dark, dark outside. And the S-O-N is still shining yes. if you got trouble on every side. Yes. So, God help us. I have to say, God help me. Because I'm one that if some little something happens that kind of troubles my spirit, I can, I can get my focus on that. Nobody else in here is like that. I can get my focus on that little thing and get all, you know, in my spirit. You know what I'm talking about? But that's not where we're supposed to live. That's not where we're supposed to be. But let me give you a little bit of encouragement tonight. God can handle it if you want to talk to him about it. <laughs> It's okay to go before God and do exactly the same, this is what Abram did. He said, God. He knows it anyway. Yeah, God does know what you're thinking anyway, so you might as well tell him, right? And sometimes when you tell him, it, gets, it, it works better for you to be honest. You know, God doesn't need me to tell him where I am, but it does me good to tell him where I am. 
And so sometimes I've done it many times in my life. I remember just falling out before God, not because I felt like I had sinned or something, but just because I needed something or I, I, need some, I didn't see things going the way I thought they should go. And I just go and, and, and kneel before God and just, just cry and say, God, this is how I'm feeling. I'm, I'm hurting. I've, I don't understand why this is happening, whatever. And just be honest with God just like Abram was. It's okay. He's not, going to, he's not going to kick you out of the room because you're not praying right. In fact, just let me tell you something. You can't hardly pray wrong if you'll just pray. <laughs> if you'll just pray, people get so wrapped up and, oh, you got to pray everything right. You got to say everything right. You got to do everything right. You know, God, by the way, you know, God loves you, loves you more than you love your kids. And if you kick your kid out of the room just because he ain't saying everything right, then God have mercy on you because yeah. <laughs> you're wrong. We should accept it, and hopefully we do accept our children with their flaws and with the fact they don't say or do everything right, right? Amen. We do. We put up with a lot, don't we? Anybody ever put up with a lot? I mean, some of you got older kids now. You, you got little kids. You ain't putting up nothing yet. <laughs> <laughs> Just wait. <laughs> My daddy used to say when they're little, they trample on your toes. When they get big, they trample on your heart. So, and that was a very true statement. But when, when, even when our kids are, are so disrespectful and don't consider our feelings and, and, and have and arguments and all that, you know what, we don't throw them away, do we? But somehow or another, we feel like God does that us. We feel like God throws us away way too easily. I'm telling you, as long as you're crying out to the Lord, he's never going to throw you out of the room. He's never going to, to, to deride you nor, nor tell you, I don't want you coming and praying if you can't pay, pray right. Now, there's some preachers will tell you that kind of mess. Oh, if you don't say everything right, if you don't have a perfect way, you know. I can't go to God and say, God, I'm afraid and I'm scared because that's a bad confession. Baloney, God knows you're afraid and God knows you're scared. You might as well go tell him. Amen. And it's a good confession, by the way. And the confession really is good for the soul. Yes. God can deal with honesty, but he, he will not deal with a lie. So honestly, and that's the way you're set free in the first place. You know, when God set me free, I said, God, I don't know how to be a good wife. God, I don't know how to be a good pastor's wife. God, I don't know how to be a good mother. God, I don't know how to be any of these things I'm supposed to be so good at. I don't know. I resign. I resign from trying. But I do know I need to be all those things. So by your grace, I ask you to change my heart so that I can do those things better that I'm doing them now, and you know what? God did. But he didn't do it until I realized that I needed to confess that I, was, I wasn't in agreement with God. I wasn't in agreement with God. And Abram is not in agreement with God because you see, God has a plan for Abram. He's already told him he's got a plan for him. But he still could stand, God could still stand Abram's questions. Even though God had a plan for him, even though God had told him his plan, have y'all ever said, I've told you that before? Amen. I've told you that before. Have you ever heard God say that? Amen. I never heard God say that. Anytime I ever went to God, I never heard him say, <laughs> like I do. <laughs> How many times I've told you? Come on, we get so aggravated sometimes. But God doesn't get aggravated. You know, if I want to challenge you, pray. Pray. Don't wait till you get everything right to pray. Don't wait till you're perfect to pray. Don't wait until you don't have any questions to pray. Don't wait for anything to pray. Just pray. Talk to God just like you talk to the person that you're most comfortable talking to. Because there's nobody on this planet that loves you like God loves you. Nobody. And he can deal with the things that frustrate you. He can deal with the things that you're dealing with. He will still 
touch you, he will still minister to you. So Abram says, how can you bless me? God, I don't even have a heir. How, how can you? See, Abram knew the blessings that God had already told him. And so God reaffirms that to him. Look at what he says. And he says, Behold, the word of the Lord came into him, saying, This shall not be thine heir. This guy who is not birthed from you is not going to be your heir, but he shall come forth from thine own bowels shall be, that shall come forth shall be thine heir. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Now God's going to reestablish this fact to him stronger and more. You know, God deals with us over and over and over again. Say, thank God. Amen. I'm so glad God doesn't give up. He keeps on dealing. You know, we were talking about praying for people a while ago that are lost. I'm telling you, I told you this a few uh, Wednesday nights ago. I firmly believe that when we pray, God keeps on dealing with those lost people. Amen. I believe that when I'm on my knees praying for somebody, the Holy Spirit is working on that life. Now, they're trying to ignore him. They're trying to believe that it don't matter and all that's going on. But I firmly believe that when we pray, God works on things. The Holy Spirit goes and deals with things we're praying about. I believe if you don't believe that, there's no need to pray. But I believe that. So I want to pray and ask God to save these kids. I pray for your kids. I pray for those God brings to my mind that are your children, not just mine. And ask God to bring them in no matter what it takes. I'm sorry, that's what I pray. When I pray for people that are on their way to hell, I say, God, no matter what it takes to bring them into the kingdom, bring them. Because that's what I believe with all my heart. The worst thing in the world to happen to anybody is go to hell. So I'm going to pray for everybody that I know that's lost, whatever it takes. Now, that's a big mouthful, but it's worth it because that's what it has to be. And so God didn't, didn't uh, get upset with him, but he kept on dealing with Abraham. Thank God. It's a testimony to us that in spite of our ignorance, in spite of our lack of faith, I'm glad to tell you you don't have to have perfect faith for God to ever work for you. Isn't that wonderful to know? You know, so wonderful, so relaxing, so peaceful. That even if your faith isn't perfect, doesn't mean God ain't never, you know, people say if you mix faith and doubt, God won't hear you. Well, excuse me, then he ain't never going to hear me because sometimes I got faith and doubt all mixed up right there in my head. But thank God I know he hears me. He hears me, so don't beat yourself over the head. Keep on talking to God. God came to him and said, he brought him out. Let me finish this section. They brought him out and said, look now toward heaven and tell the stars. And if thou be able to number them, he said unto him, so shall thy seed be. And look at this next verse. This is repeated in Hebrews. And he believed in the Lord and he counted it to him for righteousness. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Yeah. All I want to say, it's so crazy. Those same people, and how many of y'all listen to what I'm going to say? Those same people that tell you you don't have the right kind of faith, you don't have enough faith, you didn't say it right, and all this kind of stuff, they will turn right around and say, don't say it. But how many of y'all ever heard the expression, that tickles me pink, or tickles me to death? And they'll say, oh, don't say that. Cause, and I've never seen nobody turn pink yet. And I've never seen nobody die. But those same people will talk about your faith and then and then turn right around. Boy, they got faith to believe that you say something like that and it's going to happen. So it's, it's pitiful. Yes. Anyway. Amen. That's right. Some people say, well, you know, I, I, I ordered a Coke and I got a Dr. Pepper. God must want me to have a Dr. Pepper. Let me tell you something. God don't care what you have. <laughs> He's not in favor of Dr. Peppers versus Cokes. <laughs> How ridiculous people can become when they get all caught up in junk. Amen? Uh, now, look at what it says. it says. It says that God accounted it to him or counted it or credited it to him for righteousness. Why? Why did God credit to him for righteousness? Because why? Because he believed in the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, you know, even though the provision of righteousness... Uh, that was provided by Jesus through the cross wasn't available yet. 
you know, we know that it's not my righteousness. It's his righteousness in me. I'm in the position of being righteous because I'm in him. That's why. Not because I'm perfect. I'm in the position of being righteous because I'm in Christ. Well, this was a time in history before Christ went to the cross. But I want you to understand that God always has, from, from the foundation of the earth until the end of everything, always has responded to faith. Amen. Faith is not a new thing that happened in the New Testament. Faith was required for Abraham to be declared righteous by God. So Abraham reached forward into the provision of righteousness by having this incredible faith that was able to look at the stars of the sky, understanding that he could not count them, and believe that his, his, uh, his lineage was going to be more in number than the stars of the sky, even though he didn't yet have one child. So therefore, God said he accounted this to Abraham. This was laid up to his account, in other words. Reckoned to his account that he was righteous because of faith. We are now righteous because of faith and faith alone. It takes faith, and now we have an object of our faith that is more uh, clear, and that object is when Jesus Christ hung on the cross, that he died in our place, Galatians uh, 2 and 24, I think it is, says, that I now live in him. I, I died, but yet I live through Jesus Christ. So therefore, I'm living through Christ because of what he did for me on the cross. So I'm in him, and that's why I'm righteous. He's in me through the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why I'm righteous, not because I'm perfect. Amen. Praise the Lord. But because he lives in me and I live in him and we are with Christ in God, praise the Lord, the scripture says. So therefore we are righteous because of our position, not because of our perfection. Amen. If I could be righteous because I'm perfect, then I wouldn't need God. <laughs> but I need him desperately because I'm a mess. And I'm going to live in him and him in me by the grace of God that he provided at the cross. And therefore I, think I can declare myself righteous. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, because it's condition. A, 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 how do they say it? Your position is not changed by your condition. Your position is not changed by your condition. As long as your faith is exclusively in Christ, who he is and what he's done for you, your position remains secure. Your position is to be in Christ. And so Abraham looked forward, you know, just like David did when he committed adultery, you know, he should have been stoned to death by the law. But you know what he did? He reached forward by faith into the grace of Christ and was forgiven before forgiveness was possible. So we can reach into the things of God and be empowered by him and see the great things of God happen for us. Don't ever give up on what God will do for you. Don't ever let the devil come to you and lie to you about these things because God produces righteousness in all of us by our faith and his grace. Verse number seven. And he said unto him, I am the Lord that brought thee up out, out of Ur of the Chaldees to give thee this land to inherit it. And the Lord said, and he said, Lord God, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? And he said unto him, Take me an heifer of three years old and a she-goat of three years old and a ram of three years old and a turtle dove and a young pigeon. And he took unto him all these and divided them in the midst and laid each piece one another one against another, but the birds he divide, birds divided he not. When the fowls came down upon the carcasses, Abram th drove them away. Now, if you study through the scripture, and I'm not going to take you there necessarily, but you will see in the scripture that this is called cutting the covenant. It's cutting the covenant, they call it. And so this was a way of establishing, when they cut these animals and laid them out. This was a way of establishing covenant in that time. Now, I know this sounds strange to us, but this is the way it, it was operating during this period of time. And so Abraham knew what God was doing when God told him to cut these animals in half. And then the Bible says that he cut them in two parts, uh, laid one against the other. But look what happened. As soon as he laid it out there, what happened? 
all the birds of prey started attacking. Come on. Abram had to get busy. He couldn't sleep. He couldn't, you know, lollygag around. He had a job immediately. You know what that job was? Keeping those things away. Fight the good fight of faith. The arrows of the enemy, and God said, I'm your shield. It's your faith, that shield, the shield of faith. Hallelujah. And so when you get into covenant with God, this is what this is about. This is about covenant. When you get into covenant with God, I'm going to tell you what, the enemy is going to do every, don't ever think you're not, you're going to just live from, the, oh, I'm never going to, you know, have another problem, or I'm not going to be attacked to the enemy anymore. Now, I can tell you, yes, you've been given victory over everything. All power has been given unto you through Jesus Christ to overcome the devil. But that doesn't mean he's not going to attack. Him, you know, he doesn't always attack in, you know, like some you're going to see tomorrow. You know, some of those wicked looking things coming around. Come on. Uh, he, he doesn't dress up like that. He comes to you like an angel of light to attack your faith. He might send your next door neighbor to attack your faith. Or your husband or your wife to attack your faith. Or your kids to attack your faith. Or somebody else. Who knows? Who knows? All your job is is to stay on guard and be ready to shoo them off. Amen. Greater is he that's in me than he is in the world. Get out of here. I'm not going to walk down that path. Come on. He, he, the Bible says that he had to shoo them off. So, a watch must be kept by us. The Bible says to watch, guard your bind. Guard your mind. Uh, vain thoughts that come around that want to destroy. It's like these fowls coming in to destroy. Coming down to attack what you've given to God. Amen. Yep. You know, you come down the altar, you give something to God, and then you get up and leave, and it's like, oh my goodness, all this junk starts breaking loose on you. Well, I gave that to God, but you know the devil wants you to pick it back up. He doesn't want you to be that living sacrifice giving God yourself fully. And so we must drive them away and seek to attend that our faith completely be focused on Christ. Verse number 12. And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and lo, an horror of great darkness fell upon him. And he said unto Abram, Sure, know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them 400 years. Now this is the period of time that they were captured and taken into Egypt into servitude. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge. Afterwards shall they come out with great sub substance. Let me explain something to you right there before I go any further. Even though the children of Israel were, took, were taken into captivity, why were they taken into captivity? Y'all tell me. Why was Israel taken into captivity by Egypt? Well, why did they fall into it in the first place? No, I'm asking you originally before they ever went there, why did they go? <laughs> Let me tell you why Israel was ever enslaved. They turned their back on God. Yeah. Understand what I'm saying. Brother Donald was understanding what I was taught. Wasn't understanding that those years that they were there. That's right. What he's saying is true. But before they ever went there, they went there because they turned their back on God. Yes. Every time Israel was ever brought into servitude is because they were not truly following God with all their heart. So they ended up in servitude. Let me explain something about you. When we go away from Christ, we're going to end up in servitude to something. I'm glad to tell you that even though you're there, wandered away in some kind of servitude, God still remembers everything he's ever promised you. I'll explain that to you. God still remembers. Doesn't mean you're going to go to heaven if you've denied God, 
but you're not, God's not going to, he, he knows where you are. Those kids that have wandered away from God, God knows where they are. He knows what he placed upon them. He knows what he promised them. He knows what he had in store for them. He knows that. He still knows that. And even though they're in servitude, don't ever believe they can't come back. This is a prophecy concerning Israel. God's saying they're going to be, become servants for 400 years. And you know the story of the servitude of Israel. You know that story. And so the scripture tells us that in the middle of it, here's what he's saying to him. They're going to come back. The scripture says, afterward they shall come out with great substance. So not only did God bring them out of their servitude, guess what? He brought them out with abundance. He didn't strip them and make them come back struggling and all broken down. No, he didn't. He brought them out with, with great substance. And it says, And thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace. Thou shalt be buried of a good old age. But the fourth generation, they shall come hither again, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. You see, in the suffering state of Abraham's seed for a long time, living among strangers, they were still God's children on this earth. It doesn't, doesn't mean that they were perfect, but God still cared about them. God still had his hand on them. The great event that we're talking about here is the deliverance of Abraham's seed out of bondage, which the Lord told him about. In verse number 14, it says, And it came to pass that when the sun went down, it was dark. Behold, a smoking furnace and a burning lamp that passed between those pieces. In the same way, God made a covenant with Abraham, saying, Unto thy seed have I given this land, from the river Euphrates into the great river, the river Euphrates, the river, the river of Egypt, unto the great river, the river Euphrates. And then he gives a list of people that I'm not going to read right now that he's going to have to take out of the land so there'd be room for Israel to live in the land. Don't worry about where you're going to be when God takes you where he's got you to go. He'll make room for you. He'll make room for you. The gifts that God gives to you, he'll make room for them to operate. Did you know that? I've seen so many people try to, try to fix things, but God can bring it to where it needs to be. This smoke and furnace and burn, burning lamp deals with the burning and the smoke and the des destruction of Israel during this time. But it's uh, in my commentary that I read, it said it's prob probable that this furnace and lamp, which passed between the pieces, burned and consumed them and so completed the sacrifice and testified God's acceptance of it. It's so, uh, God's covenant with us, just to let you know, we have a covenant. I don't have time to go into as much detail right now as I would like to, but we have a covenant with God. Amen. And that covenant was, cons was uh, delivered to us on the cross, and the fact that Christ ascended back to heaven proves that our covenant is secure. Only we can break that covenant. God can't. God doesn't break it. God never breaks covenant. God never breaks covenant. We're the only one who can break it. Just like the scripture that my husband used about the fact that you can go away from God if you want to. You can, but you're the one who has to break covenant. Jesus said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So I have to break covenant in order for me to go away from God. So if you meet with seasons of darkness and distress, but it's not the will of God that you should be cast down, fear not. The one who was faithful to Abram is faithful to you. The one who was faithful to Abram is faithful to you. Do you believe that? How many believe you have to be perfect for God to be faithful to you? How many of you believe you have to be perfect for God to be... I'm not going to put my hand up because I was just demonstrating. <laughs> I was just demonstrating. No, you don't. Everybody should say, thank God. Thank God. How many of you know God was faithful to you when you were away from him? Man, I'm telling you, God's been good to me. You know, he could let the devil kill me in my pain, in my, in my misery. He could let the devil kill you. You could be in hell tonight. If you were, had rejected Christ and walked away for a while, I'm not judging anybody because I don't know your business. But thank God for 
for his great mercy. Pastor sent this. Uh, Psalm 107 says, They wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way. They found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distresses. That's where Israel went, and that's where we need to go. Cry unto God in the middle of your distress. Cry unto God. He will always hear your prayer. I promise you. Please understand me, all of you. God will always hear you when you pray. Don't ever let the devil lie to you. I hadn't been good enough or God won't hear me. God will hear you when you pray. That's why we need to pray. Amen. God bless you. I've got to shut up. Thank you so much for your attention tonight. Thank <laughs> you.